First off, an apology. I did try to do something different with the psalm today and didn't look at my own notes. So that's completely my fault. But thanks for uh, figuring out what I had in mind anyway today. Our text, most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? In the name of Jesus, amen. Happy Father's Day. Just as we give thanks to God for our mothers, so today is set aside by our state to thank God for fathers. Now, we thank God for all kinds of fathers, the faithful kind, the bold kind, the hardworking, the sacrificial, the loving father. But can we truly thank God for all fathers? What about the unfaithful, the weak, the lazy, the selfish, the unloving father? No, I don't think we can, at least not easily. And God reveals himself to us as Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three persons and three persons in unity. But there's a problem. We think we must import meaning and understanding into those terms, Father and Son and Spirit. So the thinking goes, we learn about God as Father from our fathers. We learn of the Son by our sons. We learn of the Spirit by the human spirit. But run this through to its conclusion. If you were to try to learn of God as your father from your fathers, what sort of father God does that get you? If that's how you're going to do it, then he's the mixed bag of a father, really. At times, he's incredibly compassionate, and at times, he's an arrogant jerk. Sometimes he's full of self-giving love, and other times he's just right out selfish. Often he defends you, and other times he leaves you alone to suffer. That's if you try to understand God the Father according to your Father, even according to me, children. <laughs> but that's actually how we read the Bible, too. We put God in the dock on trial and ask over and over, how could a loving father do that sort of thing? Destroy the world with a flood. Wipe out the firstborn of all of Egypt. Conquer every man and beast who had rightful claim to the land of Canaan. Be a God of war and of battle sending his own children even into exile in Assyria and Babylon. What kind of father is that? And of course, there were some good times with children and rainbows and harvests and feasting. There were times of blessing after blessing, but in the midst of curses and death. It seems that if that's how we're to read the Bible, then God the Father is sending us some mixed message. Maybe he's actually like our earthly fathers after all. As Jesus said, which father among you would give his child a scorpion when he asks for an egg? Good on him. But let's run things the other way. Your expectations of God, the Father, are actually too low. Because your heavenly Father is far more than another one of the gods. He's not known to you by looking at your earthly father. He's known by his own self-revelation. He's known to you as Father by his word. You confess today in our epistle that all things are from him and through him and for him. That is, he gives you everything that is needed for your faith and life. They're all from you, from him, and given to you all at once, even without your asking. He will be your father, full of mercy, compassion, and love, because that's simply who he is. He will be your father, and you will be his children, now and always, 
without your doing, believing, or even seeking. I thank God for that. If he wasn't that kind of father, there's no way that he would bear with you and all your stupid sin. Your father's put up with a lot. Your earthly father's too, no doubt. But God the Father puts up with far more. Your bald-faced rebellion, your complete and utter rejection, your daily return to the pigsty to wallow in the muck, like the prodigal son. God the Father puts up with it patiently, uncomplainingly, even as it brings scandal upon his name and upon his reputation. Look at those Christians. And he even let you crucify his son, making the obedient son of God the substitute for all of your disobedience. And that's it. The only way that you can know God as Father, in the way of grace and mercy, peace and compassion, is by way of his son. God the Father so loved you that he gave you his only begotten son, gave him into death, to save you and to save the whole world, that you would not perish but have everlasting life. He's not just any father, but he is the only father whose will is to give everything, even his own, to save you. It's astounding, it's unbelievable. Not that he is your father, but that he is loving, merciful, and compassionate without limit end point or bottom, all through his son, Jesus. So let's be honest, no matter how great your father, he just doesn't stack up. He's actually just as much a sinner as each one of you. Indeed, you can actually thank your father for his sin. Your father to child saying stupid acts, words, and thoughts. You bear resemblance to him. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, Jesus said. But God the Father, why do you believe in him? How can you believe in him? You can't, really. It's too crazy. He's too unbelievable. But you don't have to. Because the Father gives you that belief, too. And he does it by way of giving you life, making you his child through baptism being born again from above by water and the Spirit. And along with that baptism, that being made a child is the gift of the Spirit to believe, to trust what is quite unbelievable to your flesh. So the Spirit who proceeds from the Father reveals to you His Son, Jesus. And you can't know God as your Father apart from knowing His Son, Jesus. And you can't know either the Father or the Son apart from the giving of the Holy Spirit. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things, Jesus said? How can you? Except by the Spirit. And as the Spirit reveals the Son, and by showing the Son, shows you your heavenly Father. So let's look about today. Where is the Spirit breathing at work? Can you hear him? Can you feel him as he blows through. We don't have the windows open. Or maybe the Spirit is just a sm still small voice, a little whisper. Or maybe a mighty rushing wind, like last week. You can look around, you can try to find him, and you won't, unless you remember his Spirit job. The Spirit's work is breathing Jesus for you, into your ears, over your head, and into your mouth. What some call the means of grace, our Lutheran confessions call the means of the Spirit. That is, how the Spirit delivers Jesus to you. And the Spirit has promised to work today under and through the means that the Father has given. So again, consider Jesus as he speaks to Nicodemus. You must be born again by water of water, I should say, and of the Spirit. When you were baptized, 
That's the spirit there working new life in Jesus, making you, joining you to Jesus, thus making you also a son of the Father. Also, when your pastor speaks, you are forgiven. That's the Spirit's life-giving breath. Breathing upon you, Jesus' blood-bought Calvary forgiveness. The same Son of God who obeyed God the Father's will to save you. And when your pastor, ordained by the Spirit, speaks in Jesus' name, this is my body and this is my blood, there you have what he promises. You have your salvation, your life, your forgiveness. You have the gifts your loving Father has always promised to give. Now, no earthly father would ever be so unendingly, uncomplainingly good. But God the Father is that good. And thank God that sometimes our earthly fathers at least bear some pale resemblance, like a mirror dimly, of God the Father. And that can get better, too. Don't be surprised when earthly fathers start being a little less pale, weak, or lame in imitation of the Father, God. As those fathers sit at the feet of Jesus with their children, as your Father teaches you the faith, brings you up to the saving waters of baptism, as fathers instruct their children towards the Lord's Supper, as fathers absolve their children as God the Father has absolved them. That's the Spirit, and He's promised there too. And we as children thank them for it. All this forgiveness, life, and salvation will have its fruit among us too. Just as God the Father promises through His Son Jesus, as He has been breathed upon you and giving you faith by the Spirit. May God grant it among us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand to sing the Te Deum. <laughs>